Almost 26 years to the day that Jacob Wetterling disappeared, the FBI has named a person of interest in his disappearance. We've been following this breaking news for you all day. On the left, you'll see a sketch that police released in 1989 of the Wetterling kidnapper. It is next to a mugshot of Danny Heinrich taken in 1990. On the right of the screen is the mugshot from today. Heinrich is now charged with possession of child pornography. At this time, investigators say there is no physical evidence linking him to the Wetterling kidnapping, but they are describing him as a person of interest. And we have several reporters working on this investigation. Jennifer Merrily was in court with Heinrich this afternoon, and Bill Hudson and uh, Esme Murphy were also there. We're going to start with Esme Murphy. Well, Amelia, I can tell you this stunning news is the result of investigators deciding a year ago to review every aspect of this case. During that review, they zeroed in on Daniel James Heinrich. Documents made public today make it very clear that Heinrich was a major suspect in the Wetterling case very early on. Court documents show that just about eight weeks after Jacob's abduction on December 16, 1989, the FBI interviewed Daniel Heinrich. The documents say at the time, Heinrich was a suspect in the abduction and sexual assault of another boy that took place in January of 1989, and he was a suspect in a series of unsolved assaults on young boys in the nearby city of Painesville. This 1990 photo of Heinrich clearly bears a resemblance to the sketch of the suspect in the Wetterling case. Heinrich's shoe print also matched a print from the Wetterling abduction site, as did a tire track. Today, investigators said those matches were not enough to go on. They were labeled as consistent, not, uh, not able to determine that they were a match. According to court documents, it was not until July of 2015 that investigators reopening the case once again zeroed in on Heinrich, serving a search warrant at his Annandale home. The search warrant makes it clear investigators considered Heinrich a suspect in the Wetterling case. But when they searched his home, they did not find any evidence tying him to Wetterling, but they did find volumes of child porn. And that's when a major breakthrough came. Newly developed DNA technology showed Heinrich's DNA sample was a match to evidence from the sweatshirt of another victim, a 12-year-old boy who was abducted and sexually assaulted nine months before Jacob in the nearby town of Cold Spring. At today's news conference, investigators stressed Heinrich is not being charged with Jacob's abduction. Mr. Heinrich has been interviewed by investigators about the 1989 disappearance of Jacob Wetterling. Let me very, be very clear. The defendant has denied any involvement in the disappearance of Jacob Wetterling. But again, Heinrich named today as a person of interest in the case. Authorities stress they are asking for the public's help right now to get more information about Heinrich, both in the Wetterling case and in this very important pornography case. They are asking anyone with any information to call the Stearns County Sheriff at 320-259-3700 or 320-656-6625. They can also call the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at one 800 the loss. I know there are a lot of documents there, Esme, and you were just saying that you've been able to go through them, but there's a lot to go through. He, he was not only just questioned once, right? He I was mean, actually he was... questioned four times in the months after Jacob's abduction. His home was searched, his car was searched. He was a major suspect very early on. All right. Thank you, Esme. Back in May of 2014, WCCO talked with Jared. He was 12 years old when a man sexually assaulted him in Cold Spring in 1989. This uh, guy stepped out of the vehicle. Uh, approached me from behind, said, I have a gun, I'm not afraid to use it, get in the car. The man took Jared to a remote area and eventually let him go. It was nine months later when Jacob Wetterling was taken, and for Jared, the weeks after the Wetterling abduction were filled with grueling interviews with law enforcement. They brought me to a point where I broke down, where I mentally broke down, you know, just physically exhausted, and I didn't have the answer, so my parents made that decision um, that we should move. DNA evidence has now linked Danny Heinrich to Jared's case. He cannot be charged, though, because the statute of limitations has expired. But because of the similarities, Heinrich is now a person of interest in the Wetterling case. Danny Heinrich appeared before a judge for the first time this afternoon in St. Paul. WCCO's Jennifer Merrily was there. In fact, she was the only reporter in the courtroom at the time. She's live at the federal courthouse in St. Paul. Jennifer? Well, Frank, the court appearance was quick and to the point, lasting roughly five minutes. The charges against Danny Heinrich never mentioned. Danny Heinrich, seen in this mugshot, was escorted into the courtroom wearing glasses in black from head to toe. He spoke only to his attorney and Judge Jeffrey Keyes. 
Keyes asked him to state his name and date of birth, to which Heinrich replied, Danny James Heinrich, in a low, somewhat raspy voice. Heinrich was read his rights before being asked about his financial status, where he works, and if he has any assets or a way to pay an attorney. Heinrich was appointed federal defender Andrew Mooring, who I spoke with after the hearing. Mooring waived a detention hearing for Heinrich and told me at this time he can't comment on the record. Heinrich will have a preliminary hearing back here at federal court in St. Paul next Wednesday at 10 a.m. And again, we should point out that right now Heinrich has only been named a person of interest in the disappearance of Jacob Wetterling and has not been charged in that case. Right. All right. Good information, Jennifer. Thank you.